Greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking, and I am Del Barzi. And as always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world and at any stage in their nursing career, from students to retirees and anywhere in between. And so today, I am very, very, very pleased to welcome Professor Justine Bailey. Um, Justine is an educator, she's an entrepreneur, and she's going to tell us all about herself. So welcome, Justine. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Dale. I, you know, when you asked me to participate, I, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, this is what, a, what an honor. And I, I, I'm so glad that over this time, we've gotten to know each other too, and, and build a rapport and really just support what we're both doing in the space of nursing. So thank you for having me. It is my it is my pleasure. It is my pleasure. So tell me a little bit about you. How did you come to be a nurse? Uh, well, I've been a registered nurse. I'm a registered nurse here in Canada, Ontario, Canada. I've been nursing um, for over 15 years. You know, I stumbled across nursing. It wasn't something that I just knew right off the bat that it was something I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something health related, but really at the time it, it was my parents pushing me to get into nursing because it was a, a stable job. Mm -hmm. um, and coming from an immigrant family, my parents are, are Filipino, you know, they want their children and the next generation to have that stability mm -hmm. in, a, in a career. So I was naturally, um, I wouldn't say pushed, but kind of guided, <laughs> yeah. um, led, guided into the profession. And mm -hmm. just over the years, I have learned to love the profession, the amazing opportunities that are involved with mm -hmm. within the career of nursing, the opportunity to grow, to work, where, when however you want. Um, and I've just kind of learned to love the profession of nursing <laughs> over time. And I still feel like that relationship is still evolving as I'm mm -hmm. evolving as a person. Um, you know, what? it's funny when people ask you, oh, what do you, what do you do for a living? You know, and you say, oh, I'm a nurse. People already have an idea of what that means, right? Which is why we're doing nurses talking to begin yeah. with. Um, but traditionally, people think you work in a hospital, mm -hmm. you work with mm -hmm. clients, and I knew right off the bat, I didn't necessarily want to stay with working with patients at the bedside. I started out right at the bottom, clinical teacher for a few years, contract at many different universities and colleges, just trying to get experience while attending graduate school. Um and just kind of built my way up and, and finally kind of landed a, a full-time position in academia. And um, most recently, I have transitioned out of academia into <laughs> entrepreneurship. And isn't that the beauty of nursing? You yeah. can transition and flow and move and navigate however you want or whatever pace you want. Um and a lot of people don't realize that, right? Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. in nursing school, because you're taught. No, no one tells you, you. You do this position, then you move to this. At least two or three years, you need a mm -hmm. med surge. And then, you know, yeah. um, but I'm always a big champion for, you know, making career moves that work for you, right? Yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah, that's indeed. a little bit about indeed. Me. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. And, and and the thing about making career moves that work for you is that we all come to this. We all have different personalities and different interests and, and different things to offer. Uh, we can't offer all offer the same thing in the same place, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what what were the challenges for you that or yeah, what were the challenges for you working in the institutional setting, if there were any? Oh, challenges. Okay. In, in my most recent kind of role in, in academia, maybe yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll start with, with that. Um, well, first, 
you know, I, I attended graduate school right after my undergrad and that was a big no, no back in, uh-huh. in my day where the, the belief was there was a rite of passage that every mm-hmm. student needed to go through. You work one or two years in med surge or gain some clinical sp- experience, and then you apply to graduate school. Well, I totally did it my way. Um, so the challenge for me, I always felt was I was always up against the traditional way of thinking, I guess, I don't, I don't know if we want to call it like the rituals of nursing or Mm. the unspoken pathways, right? Mm -hmm. You are supposed to do when, once you you graduate. So that in and of itself was, I was going against the grain. I was going against what everyone else was telling me not to do. Mm -hmm. And like cycle back 15 years in later, I'm still doing that now, Mm. kind of transitioning out of academia and into the entrepreneurial space. That's a big no-no, right? Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. that goes Mm -hmm. against the whole, it's not stable. We don't know too much. Not (laughs) many people are doing it, especially here in Canada. It's Uh. very untraditional, unheard of. (laughs) Um, you don't see a lot of nurse entrepreneurs and people of color also. Uh-huh. That's another mm-hmm. barrier that I yeah. learned very quickly getting into the system. And I say system as in, you know, the academic world and the system yeah. of just, you know, as nurses, we have to navigate what the hospital system looks huh. like, <laughs> what what the school system yeah. looks like. Um and I learned very on as a person of color, there are unique challenges, such as you don't see people around you that look like you when you're sitting at leadership tables. Yeah. In management meetings. And I'm sure mm-hmm. you've experienced that yeah. too in your career. Yeah. Absolutely. So the role model, there are not a lot of role models that you can really look up to and say, hey, you know, I really mm-hmm. admire what what you're doing. And I want to, you know, can I pick your brain? None of that existed. I think it's getting better now. Yeah. Um, So that was a challenge too, being a visible minority and kind of navigating that Mm -hmm. system and still doing it up until, you know, this day too. Um, I also think too, another barrier was just kind of unlearning unlearning you know what we're taught in in school or like what we're I know you're taught you're taught in nursing school the foundational skills but I also think there's a curriculum a hidden curriculum if you Mm. will where you know and and some educators might not even think about but because I've taught in many years the the, the different years and I've seen over time just how curriculum really shapes and molds our thinking and then we mm-hmm. go into the nursing world and it's it comes it's un- yeah it's it's for me it was unlearning okay I've you know I've learned what I've learned in nursing school um how can I now uh apply this in a in a way that works for me right so for example nursing school talks a lot about um let's say, um, a- autonomy, right? Or critical thinking and, mm-hmm, and teaching mm-hmm. students those types of skills. But then when you're working as a, as a nurse at the bedside or in education or in management or in leadership, what have you, it's it's how do you take that concept and apply it to the real, real world? Mm-hmm. Yeah, And, you know, that in itself, when you add the layer of being a person of color, being a female, uh, like all those other layers, that can get very, that can be a challenging experience. So can, because there's a lot of bias built into the system. 100%. 100%. Implicit bias, not outward, right? Yeah. It's all implicit, right? Yeah. so yeah, so that those are some of the barriers that I've encountered for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, 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 I get it. I get it. Mm. So you worked in the emergency room. Yes. I know so you're you... chuckling. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You, that... you like the adrenaline pumping. <laughs> What's that? I said, do you like the adrenaline pumping? I thought I did. I you thought, thought I did. Into that time. And then I was like, uh-uh, I, this, mm -hmm. it's not sustainable. It, mm -hmm. It's not sustainable. Um, at the time it worked for that moment in my career. I, I worked there yeah. for a few years, about seven years <laughs> or so on and off, like casual part-time. Um, but I realized the gr good thing about that is I, the learning curve was like this, yes. right? As yes. a new grad, it's like this. It's not a steady no, you're mm -hmm. learning like this. And, mm -hmm. you know, I typically, again, it wasn't the traditional thing for emergency departments to hire new grads. That just mm -hmm. wasn't a thing back then. Right. And so I was kind of, um, you know, I, I was kind of the oddball out, if you will, because I was a new grad in the emergency department. And so people already stereotype yeah. that in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of proving you have to do, right? Um, so again, that's a, that's that was how I started my career is trying to really like prove myself and, mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. wrong and also prove to myself that no, I belong here. I'm capable. Yeah. I may not know it all and I never pretended to, but um I knew what my strengths were and I was willing to learn and put in the work and effort to make sure that I was safe um, and and that it, I would get support where I needed. And the emergency department that I worked um, worked at was great. They they There was a trust there, but there was also, I knew what my strengths were and what my areas of weakness were. Uh, and so I didn't delve into anything that I knew I didn't have the knowledge, skill, or judgment to, to mm -hmm. do. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like even as a new grad, I never triaged until maybe a year mm -hmm. into working because yeah. I knew I wasn't ready for that yet. Yeah. Right. And yeah. as much as the emergency, the, the manager was kind of, no, you got to learn. Da, 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 da. I, I know I really advocated for myself. <laughs> like, let me really just hone down on my, my clinical skills, my critical thinking, get, get a good feel of the flow yeah. and the pace before I sit in that hot seat, because. Yeah, that, that is a seat. <laughs> yeah, that is a seat. Yes. Have, have you worked in the emergency department too? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so you know. Seat. You know. Yeah. 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 But that well, and you, you just talked about advocating for yourself. Yeah. Um, that in itself is, is, is a skill that has to be really learned and, and practiced. And because you can get pushed into stuff. Oh yeah. And 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 you know, resistance is not viewed as viewed with a kind eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, it it also it's come it comes with my personality too. I just I'm naturally outspoken mm -hmm. and I will naturally, if something doesn't sit right in my soul and in my core, yeah. I will speak mm -hmm. out at the appropriate time, of course. Mm -hmm. So that was something that and that's kind of you know what I had to do in that scenario as well is just really speak up for myself and thankfully I had a, a preceptor who believed in that too and really kind of supported me from, yeah, from yeah. that angle but yeah the the advocacy self-advocacy comes from knowing who you are and knowing mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and standing up for what you really believe in and what you, what your truth is um so so yeah that that's definitely something I'm still learning at, you know as I'm evolving as a person too um but it, 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 in the emergency department at that time in my career um yeah I, I felt very important that I needed to do that so I don't lose my license either yeah. right yeah yeah yeah, I, it, it's it's a good thing, and I, I honed in on that that you talked about advocacy because, um, you know, during the course of our education as nurses, 
um, it can become so overwhelming and the, the responsibility that you begin to feel can be so much that you can lose yourself um, yeah. and, and, and not, you know, um, just kind of forget that you need to be responsible for what's happening with you. And, and and just kind of go with her because oh I need to do this because someone says this is what I should do I need to do this and you can lose yourself yeah yeah I think we can get so caught up in um the flow of the the shift or the yeah. the pressure, pressure. that mm -hmm. management is really kind of forcing yeah. down and if but if we don't say something then just the cycle continues, right? Continues. And then they ask for more and more and then more and some more until <clears throat> we do something and say something. And I think nurses now are becoming better at that, um, yeah. voicing out. I mean, we saw what was happening in New York, right? Yeah. And, and even here in Ontario um, mm -hmm. with Bill 124, like, um here in Ontario that that bill is around like increasing pay for for nurses mm -hmm. and we're speaking mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. more and we're advocating for ourselves as a nursing yeah. profession yeah. and that that's great because we're doing it for our patients but we're not doing it for ourselves but we're not doing it for ourselves yes exactly 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 and that that's one of the things we talk about here on this because many things that we accept for ourselves we would never accept for our patients we would never accept patients yeah. yeah yeah but the thing about nurses advocating for themselves and speaking well comes with the um the evolution of nursing and and the fact that it has gotten so broad and nurses can are realizing that they can be in so many different places and that they have the ability to um pursue higher and higher education because if you pursue higher education you can see yourself in a different role you can see yourself in a management role you can see yourself in an educational role you can see yourself um you know in the coroner's office um or wherever you choose to be and that gives you a certain bit of um of, of, of confidence and, and feeling of independence and you know standing being able to stand your ground. Absolutely. Empowerment. Yeah, right? that's the word. Empowerment. Yeah. Where yeah. You stand confident in who you are and um, what you've been through. And you are more confident to speak up when. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and and, and not for nothing, but I do think that the, this last pandemic helped a lot with that. Um, yeah. It took its toll. It took its toll. But it helps a lot with that, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For it, it, yeah. it, it caused also a lot of um, people to rethink what their nursing career would look like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like I think it really caused everyone to put a mirror in front of, of themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And think about as nurses, what do I really want to be doing? Like, do I really want to be doing this? Yeah. Long term, yeah. is it worth it? Is it worth mm -hmm. putting my family at risk, or is it worth missing all the family events and all the things yeah. that give me joy? Um, what am I really doing, and why? And I why? think it really yeah. caused a lot of people to reflect that way, and some people made the pivot, some people didn't. But at least it caused everyone to stop to in their think tracks. about it. I think, yeah, yes, because and and you just you just you just you just made a point because very often as nurses we thought about missing family events and stuff like that, and we accepted that, and I guess for the most part, in many ways, our families accepted that. We never, though, uh, or very rarely, internalized that our very job was putting our family at risk. Mm. And I think the risk thing is what really, um, you know, showed up a lot. It was like, wait a minute, I can I can miss some things, but do I really want to put my family at risk every single day like yeah. this? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, you became an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, I, it's so weird that you say that even just you introducing me as an entrepreneur, it seems so foreign to me because <laughs> I'm still coming to terms with that label, so to speak, right? Um, because it can mean so many different things too, mm -hmm. right? But I, you know, as we were talking about the, the pandemic and COVID and what it caused people to do, I was one of those people that I had the mirror in front of me and was mm -hmm. really doing a lot of reflecting, a lot of prayer, a lot of just soul searching too at the time. Um, and I decided to pivot and move out of academia full time. I still, I still teach, um, you know, part time, but I wanted to transition and use my nursing skills in just a different way, a non-traditional way, um, through social media and, um, through other arms of the business. So it's only been six months since I've actually officially pivoted mm -hmm. into the entrepreneurial space and so you know that was a decision where I had to really think about um will I still be a nurse if I pivot this way and if I'm not you know teaching in nursing schools would I still be considered a nurse and again it's that unlearning that has to happen right yes of course you're still a nurse you still have those letters behind your name you're just using your skills in a different context, in a different forum. And I would argue a forum where there's more of an audience than standing yeah. in front of a classroom or at a lecture <laughs> hall, lecturing your hundred students or whatever, right? Um, so yes, I got into to the entrepreneurial space. I'm still learning. I don't know it all, but I'm learning so much just about social media, business, networking, re relationships, marketing, graphic design, like <laughs> it, it, it is, it, and I'm sure you have too, developing yeah. your YouTube channel, yeah. right? Yeah. You go through, what's a hashtag? How do you use, well, hashtags? Exactly. <laughs> How do you use hashtags strategically? How do you SEO and, and mm -hmm. optimize your titles and all of that is new, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I'm up for the challenge. And yeah. just like anything, you're learning a new skill. You read yeah. about it. You YouTube it. <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> right? You YouTube it. You practice it. Yeah. You practice it some more and more. You talk to people who've done it. And eventually, over time, you learn it. And yes. it's no different then Next we're really mm -hmm. now in entrepreneurship, right? I'm yeah. in that building phase and learning phase. Um, but I there's growth and I know I'm I'm gonna grow incrementally and you know I'm just putting my faith and trust that as long as I do the work, he'll take care of the rest. And that's <laughs> it. And that's it. You do the work. You do the work and, and the rest will come. I exactly. have learned that. I have learned that the rest will come. So, yeah. but but your company your company is called just like that. Yes, it's still it's still education though, isn't it? It it is. That's the main arm. Just like exactly. that, my my niche. Well, just like that was created for nursing students, particularly mm -hmm. nursing students of color. I really want to champion diversity and really mm -hmm. empower students of color, nurses of color. Mm -hmm. um, and so just like that, it was meant for to help nursing students kind of navigate the system of nursing school, the unspoken curriculum, yeah. the hidden mm -hmm. curriculum, mm -hmm. coming from someone who's taught in the curriculum um, and really helping them succeed in school. But then when they transition into the role of a nurse now, they feel confident to really step into that role um, and uh, and really kind of navigate their career if they decide to pursue graduate school, if they decide to apply for, you know, a, a job, what, it, what does that look like? Because, you know, I, I would argue once you leave nursing school, you're kind of left to figure stuff out on your own in terms of how to move up 
that yeah. corporate ladder, how to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, move through your career. And so that's kind of what it what it's all about. And you know, I, I don't know if it will it will if it will always be kind of the education, but that's kind of where I'm starting because it's familiar, because I'm I know I know that space. I know the 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 niche or the audience. And so that's kind of how I'm starting out. Um but who knows? Like it could delve into other things, speaking engagements. Yes, uh, I was a mm -hmm. You know, speaking engage workshops, uh, doing continuing education workshops, doing um, coaching. Like that's what mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about too. Is just kind of coaching, coaching students um, yes. through milestones in their career. Yeah, getting them to unlearn some of the things that they've learned in nursing school. Getting them to open their minds a little bit and think of themselves. Yes, you're a nurse, but there are so many other opportunities outside of the hospital that your nursing school doesn't really promote or yeah talk about. yeah so yeah. yeah that's what just like that is all about <laughs> and that's a that's a good that's a good thing because we talk a lot about um you know not learning certain things in nursing school but at the end of the day really nursing is so huge that you really cannot you really cannot learn every all of these things in nursing school. And so this is where stuff like like just like that comes mm -hmm. in um, because and fills that gap. Yeah. Um, because even yes, you still need you still need coaching, you still need guidance, you still need um that someone to say, yeah, but you can go here. Mm -hmm. You don't have to abandon your nursing, all of this. Yeah. You really can go this way. Yeah. 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 And help you find the, the, the steps to go that way. Exactly. Exactly. Because fortunately, you know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You don't have to leave the hospital completely, but you can do the hospital in a side gig, a side hustle. You can, you know, create a career that works for you, that gives you passion, that fills yeah. you up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not so drained at the end of the day and then you're you're working on fumes right <laughs> you you yep. want to be able to if you want to have an, a sustainable nursing career you've got to fill yourself up otherwise how can you serve others if your cup exactly. is not filled right exactly so yeah so that brings me to to, to a question that i wanted to ask is what what does self-care mean to you? Because everybody's banding about self-care these days, but what does yeah. it mean? It means different things to different people. What does it mean to you? Self-care, self-care. Um, when I think about self-care, I, I think about, you know, loving yourself right and it's not even about loving yourself first because in some situations you're not going to be first all the time right right i think our culture has this idea of no you've got to put yourself first right but in in reality sometimes that that's not always possible right mm -hmm. i i think about you know new moms I went through this with my two kids, new moms, you have a newborn, your baby needs to be fed first before, mm -hmm. <laughs> before you, 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 you can brush your teeth or, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. So when there are some situations where you just might not come first and that's okay. So I I've kind of learned that self-care is just about showing yourself love, like, just taking care of yourself, whether that's physical, spiritual, emotional, is taking that time every day to really care for yourself. And I'm not talking about brushing your teeth or doing your hair or just something that really gives you joy or makes you feel good about yourself. Um, for me, it's things like putting on a full face of makeup <laughs> or just doing a YouTube workout in my basement for 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. It's just 
showing your self love that you that you matter too um and i've learned to accept that i'm i may not always be able to put my needs first but as long as i but as long as i consistently show myself love whether that's through makeup or going shopping for the day or whatever that's also important too. So self-care to sum it up is, is showing yourself love, even if that means you're not always first, but doing it in a consistent way, in a way that fills your cup, that gives you joy, that allows you to be able to do what you do best. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. a big question. Yeah. <laughs> It is a big question, but I ask it because I realize that we don't all have the same notion of uh, what self-care is. It does not mean the same thing to 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 everybody, you know. Um, someone the other day, I was speaking to a nurse the other day who um, actually said, gave me an idea that I hadn't even, I never thought about this. Okay. I asked that same question, what does self-care mean to you? And she said, self-care, and, and she went into this, she, I take thee. <laughs> she did the whole marriage vote thing to herself. <laughs> I take I promise to you. I take care of you. And I thought, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, like to love home. yourself. <laughs> Yes, she wrote her own vows to herself and solemnly took those vows. I was like, all right, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I had never thought about it like that. Um, but I think that when you, when you do something like that, it becomes so concrete. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so you, you somehow internalize and make this a definite part of what who you are and your vision for yourself and I thought that's yeah. huge yeah you know that may you make a good point because oftentimes self-care is an afterthought mm -hmm. right it's something yeah. that you think of oh what have I done for myself today right yeah. it's yeah. not ingrained or mm -hmm. inherent in part part of who we are or what exactly. our day-to-day -day activities are so mm -hmm. to make it official where she's <laughs> Of pronouncing vows to herself yeah. like that that's a pretty amazing way to like make it official right yeah yeah indeed indeed because for many of us it's like oh what did I do yeah. for myself so, exactly. I know it's for me um so yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. A, that's a funny that's a funny story tale <laughs> <laughs> it's funny yeah but it it, re it resonated with me I was like okay I get it I get it I get it I get it yeah. so Justine there is a thing I've been noticing that I can I can recognize nurses even if they don't tell me they're nurses really so I started to wonder well what is it that I saw in somebody that makes me think oh, this person is a nurse uh what was the quality that I saw and then I began to realize it will be a different quality for different people. Different people will recognize the same, you know, that some other quality in a person that makes them say it's a nurse. Mm -hmm. So if you had to describe a most recognizable quality of a nurse in just one word, what would that word be? The first thing that comes to mind is genuineness. Genuine. Okay. Yeah. Whether gen is genuineness a word? genuine <laughs> listen words are things that people made up so if it wasn't a word before it's hey, a word today it's a there word you right go. Now. <laughs> there you go um yeah genuine sincerity you know um where people are doing things not because they have to but because they want to um yeah. and it's funny because even just you know people i wouldn't I would, you know, meet people and and they would say, are you a nurse? Without me even telling them. That's but it's funny. funny that... 
Yeah. And you begin to wonder. What's, yeah, you begin to wonder, oh, okay, I'm, I'm kind of getting this vibe that she exhibits these mm -hmm. qualities. She must, she must be. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then you're surprised when they're not, right? Oh, well, you should, <laughs> yes. you should, you should consider person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, Justin, is there any little gem you would like to leave us with? A gem? Words mm -hmm. of advice, words of... Okay, words of advice, yes. You know, I, I'm going to speak to all my nursing students who may be watching this or new graduate nurses, nurses who are still very early on in their careers. Um, I would really just empower you and encourage you um, to keep doing the hard work that is involved in nursing school, but know that it's it's worth it because you're you are entering a profession where the world there's a world of opportunities, um, a world a profession where you can grow as an individual as a person and really make an impact on people not only physically but you know emotionally spiritually. And um, so I encourage you to keep doing the hard work during nursing school, but also know that the, that work will continue after you graduate. Um, so yeah, that would that would kind of be my my last parting words for <laughs> for my nursing students and new grads. <laughs> Well, thank you so very, very much, Justine. This welcome. was a great conversation. I loved talking to you. 